बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वर्ल्ड वाइड इन्वायरमेंटल प्रॉब्लम कॉल्ड स्मोक विद रेफरेंस टू एनवायरमेंटल केमिस्ट्री हियर वी विल लुक इन टू द डेप्थ एंड कवर हाउ इट इज फॉर्म्ड विच फैक्टर्स इनिशिएट स्मोक एंड हाउ दे कैन कंट्रोल एंड वट हैज डन ऑन इंटरनेशनल लेवल स्मोक इज अ टाइप ऑफ इंटेंस एयर पोल्यूशन The word smoke was coined in the early 20th century and is a contraction of the word smoke and fog to refer to smoky fog its opacity and the odor the word was then intended to refer to what was sometimes known as pea soup fog a familiar and serious problem in london from the 19th century to the mid 20th century this kind of a visible air pollution is composed of nitrogen oxides sulfur oxides ozone smoke and other particulate matters before going into the details about smoke it is important to know about the standards of clean air an air quality index or aqi is used by the government agencies to communicate to the public how polluted the air currently is and how polluted it is forecast to become public health risks increase as the air quality index rises particulate matter 2.5 readings are often included in air quality reports from environmental authorities and companies so it is in turn important to know about the particulate matter 2.5 computation of air quality index computation of the air quality index requires an air pollutant concentration over a specified averaging period obtained from an air monitor or model taken together concentration and time represent the dose of the air pollutant health effects corresponding to a given dose are established by the epidemiological research air pollutants vary in potency and the function used to convert from air pollutant concentration to air quality index varies by pollutant air quality index values are typically grouped into ranges each range is assigned a descriptor a color code and a standardized public health advisor the air quality index can increase due to an increase of air emission or from a lack of dilution of air pollutants stagnant air often caused by an anticyclone temperature inversion or low wind speeds lets air pollution remain in a local area leading to high concentration of pollutants chemical reactions between air contaminants and hazy conditions an individual score or individual air quality index iaqi is assigned to each pollutant and the final air quality index is the highest of these six scores the final air quality index value can be calculated either per hour or per 24 hours the concentrations of pollutants can be measured quite differently if the air quality index value is calculated orally then sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide carbon monoxide concentrations are measured as average per 24 hours ozone concentration is measured as average per hour and the moving average per 8 hours 
particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10 concentrations are measured as average per hour and per 24 hours. If the air quality index value is calculated per 24 hours, then sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10 concentrations are measured as average per 24 hours while ozone concentration is measured as the maximum 1 hour average and the maximum 24 hours moving average. The individual air quality index of each pollutant is calculated according to a formula published by the MEP. This table gives a ready reckoner of air quality index. The green color shows particulate matter from 0 to 50, which means the community live in a healthy environment. Other color regions show different particulate matter values and ultimately the properties of air quality. Real-time monitoring data and forecasts of air quality that are color coded in terms of air quality index are available from environmental protection agencies air now website other organizations provide monitoring for members of sensitive groups such as asthmatic children's and adults over the age of 65 Historical air monitoring data including air quality index, charts and maps are available at Environmental Protection Agency's air data website. Detailed map about current air quality index level and its two-day forecast is available from Aero State website. Particulate matter 2.5 refers to the atmospheric particulate matter that have a diameter of less than 2.5 micrometer, which is about 3% the diameter of a human hair. Particulate matter 2.5 means Particles in this category are so small that they can only be detected with an electron microscope. They are even smaller than their counterpart, particulate matter 10, which are particles that are 10 micrometers or less and are also called fine particles. Fine particles can come from various sources. They include power plants, motor vehicles, airplanes, residential wood burning, forest fire, agricultural burning, volcanic eruption and dust storms. Some are emitted directly into the atmosphere while others are formed when gases and particles interact with one another in the atmosphere. This picture represents the previous discussion efficiently. It shows a well-established comparison of particulate matter 2.5 and particulate matter 10 with the hair. Moreover, gaseous sulfur dioxide emitted from the power plants reacts with oxygen and water droplets in the air to form sulfuric acid as a secondary particle. IARC stands for International Agency for Research on Cancer. The IARC and WHO designate airborne particulate matter as a group 1 carcinogens. Particulates are the most harmful form of air pollution due to their ability to penetrate deep into the lungs and blood stream unfiltered, causing heart attack, respiratory diseases and premature deaths. In 2013, a study involving 
थ्री लैख ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड फोर्टी फोर पीपल इन नाइन यूरोपियन कंट्रीज रिवेल्ड डेट देयर वॉज नो सेफ लेवल ऑफ पर्टिकुलेट मैटर एंड डेट फॉर एवरी इंक्रीज ऑफ टेन माइक्रोग्राम पर मीटर क्यूब इन पी एम टेन द लंग्स कैंसर रेट रोज particular matter 2.5 were particularly deadly with a 36% increase in lung cancer per 10 microgram per meter cube as it can penetrate deeper into the lungs worldwide exposure to particulate matter 2.5 contributed to 4.1 million deaths from heart diseases and stroke lung cancer chronic lung diseases and respiratory infections in 2016 overall ambient particulate matter ranks as the sixth leading risk factor for premature deaths globally now let's look at the composition of particulate matter the composition of aerosol and particles depends on their sources wind blown mineral dust tends to be made of mineral oxides and other material blown from the earth crust this particulate matter is light absorbing Sea salt is considered the second largest contributor in the global aerosol budget and consists mainly of sodium chloride originated from sea spray Other constituents of atmospheric sea salt reflect the composition of a sea water and thus include magnesium sulfate calcium potassium etc in addition sea spray aerosol may contain organic compounds which influence their chemistry the mist emission from the wet cooling tower is also a source of particulate matter as they are widely used in the industry and other sectors of dissipating heat in cooling system organic matter can be either primary or secondary the latter part deriving from the oxidation of volatile organic compounds organic material in the atmosphere may either be biogenic or anthropogenic organic matter influences the atmospheric radiation field by both scattering and absorption another important aerosol type is elemental carbon also known as black carbon it is very important aerosol type this aerosol type includes strongly light absorbing material and is thought to yield large positive radioactive force organic matter and elemental carbon together constitute the carbonaceous fraction of aerosol and this is very important because this carbonaceous fraction of aerosol is formed from the combination of organic matter and elemental carbon secondary organic aerosol tiny turbals resulting from the combustion products of internal combustion engine in the absence of ammonia secondary compounds take an acidic form as sulfuric acid and nitric acid all of which may contribute to the health effects of particulates 
secondary sulfate and nitrate aerosol are strong light scatters this is mainly because the presence of sulfate and nitrates causes the aerosol to increase to a size that scatters light effectively smoke is a kind of air pollution originally named for the mixture of smoke and fog in the air this kind of a visible air pollution is composed of nitrogen oxides sulfur oxides ozone smoke and other particulate classic smoke results from large amount of coal burning in an area and is caused by a mixture of smoke volatile organic compound sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen the main sources of these precursors are pollutants released directly into the air by gasoline and diesel run vehicles and industrial plants levels of unhealthy exposure the united states environmental protection agency has developed an air quality index to explain air pollution levels to the general public 8 hours average ozone concentration of 85 to 140 104 parts per billion are described as unhealthy for sensitive groups 105 parts per billion to 124 parts per billion as unhealthy and 125 parts per billion to 404 parts per billion as very unhealthy the very unhealthy range for some other pollutants are 355 microgram per meter cube to 424 microgram per meter cube for particulate matter 10 15.5 parts per million to 30.4 parts per million for carbon monoxide and 0 0.65 parts per million to 1.24 parts per million for nitrogen dioxide at least two distinct types of smoke are recognized number one sulfurous smoke number two photochemical smoke sulfurous smoke which is also called london smoke results from a high concentrations of sulfur oxides in the air and is caused by the use of sulfur bearing fossil fuels particularly coal combustion emission vehicular emission and industrial emission this type of smoke is aggravated by dampness and high concentration of suspended particulate matter in the air 19th and 20th century london was particularly well known for this type of air pollution the great smoke of 1952 was identified as the cause of over 4000 deaths in london in the 1950s a new type of smoke known as photochemical smoke was introduced photochemical smoke is also known as los angeles smoke it occurs predominantly in the urban areas and have large number of automobiles it tends to occur more often in summer because we have the most intense sunlight in this season it is a mixture of pollutants that are formed when in nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds undergo photochemical reactions in the presence of sunlight in the lower atmosphere creating a brown haze over cities the highly toxic ozone gas arises from the reaction of nitrogen oxide with hydrocarbon vapors in the presence of sunlight and some of the nitrogen dioxide is produced by the photochemical reaction of nitrogen oxide surface level ozone concentrations are considered unhealthy if they exceed 70 parts per billion for eight hours or longer the resulting smoke causes a light brownish coloration of the atmosphere reduced visibility plant damage irritation of the eyes and respiratory distress 
natural causes of smoke an erupting volcano can emit high levels of sulfur dioxide along with a large quantity of particulate matter two key components to the creation of smoke however the smoke created as a result of a volcanic eruption is often known as vogue to distinguish it as a natural occurrence the chemical reactions that form smoke following a volcanic eruption are different than the reaction that form photochemical smoke the long term smoke encompasses the effect when a large amount of gas face molecules and particulate matter are emitted to the atmosphere creating a visible haze the event causing a large amount of emission can vary but still result in the formation of smoke plants are another natural source of hydrocarbons that could undergo reactions in the atmosphere and produce smoke globally both plants and soil contributes a substantial amount of to the production of hydrocarbon mainly by producing isoprene and terpenes hydrocarbons released by plants can often be more reactive than man made hydrocarbons for example when plants release isoprene the isoprene reacts very quickly in the atmosphere with hydroxyl radical these reactions produce hydroperoxides which increase ozone formation now let's have a look at the biological consequences of smoke number 1 coughing and irritation of the eyes chest nose and throat high smoke level can irritate the respiratory system leading to coughing these effects generally last for only a few days after exposure but the particles in the smoke can continue to damage the lungs even after the irritation disappear aggravation of asthma an experiment was carried out using intense air pollution similar to that of the 1952 great smoke of london the researchers from this experiment concluded that there is a link between early life pollution exposure that leads to the development of asthma proposing the ongoing effect of the great smoke modern studies continue to find links between mortality and the presence of smoke one study published in nature magazine found that smoke episodes in the city of jinan a large city in the eastern china during 2011 to 2015 were associated with a 5.87% increase in rate of overall mortality this study highlights the effect of exposure to air pollution on the rate of mortality in china asthma conditions are worsened by smoke and can trigger asthma attacks next breath difficulties and lung damage bronchitis pneumonia and emphysema are most of the lungs condition linked to the effect of smoke as it damages the lining of the lungs number 4 premature deaths world health organization report indicated 
that cumulative exposure to smoke heightens the chances of premature death from cancer and respiratory diseases. Thousands of premature deaths in the United States, Europe and Asian countries are linked to inhalation of smoke particles. Such chemical particles include benzene, formaldehyde and butadiene which are all carcinogenic. Number 5 birth defects and underweight babies smoke is highly linked to birth defects spina bifida a condition depicting malformation of the spinal column underdevelopment or the absence of the part of the brain are birth defects associated with smoke exposure furthermore studies suggest that even as low as the 5 microgram exposure to smoke particulate matter can result in the risk of underweight babies at delivery. Number six, the risk of developing rickets. Heavy smoke that lasts for prolonged periods block UV rays from reaching the Earth's surface. This results in low production of vitamin D leading to rickets due to impaired metabolism of calcium and phosphorus in the bone marrow. Number seven, risk of road and air traffic smoke interferes with natural visibility and irritates the eyes on this basis it may prevent the driver or flight controller from reading important signs or signals thereby increasing the probability of a road accident or even plane crash number eight effect on plants Smoke inhibits the growth of plants and can lead to extensive damage to crops, trees and vegetation. When crops and vegetables such as wheat, soya bean, tomato, peanuts and cotton are exposed to smoke, it interferes with their ability to fight infections, thus increasing susceptibility to diseases. Let's look at the remarkable solutions for smoke. Number one, renewable energy sources. Renewable energy source helps in the reduction of emission from power generating plants that heavily depend on fossil fuel. In other words, the use of renewable energy not only reduces the environmental impact but also trims down the presence of smoke causing pollutant in the air. Number two, reducing and managing vehicular and industrial emissions. Vehicles and industries constitute the largest contributor of smoke forming pollutants. The best way to reduce smoke is to follow maintaining and managing protocol for vehicles and industrial plants and the management of gaseous emission from cars and industries. Now the next is the use of eco-friendly consumer products. The use of household products that have high levels of volatile organic compounds should be completely avoided. These products not only release hazardous material into the atmosphere but also emit particulate matter that reacts in the presence of sunlight to form ground level ozone. The use of eco-friendly consumer products such as eco-friendly paints, paper, spray, solvents and plastics therefore provide a basis for addressing smoke pollution. Next is increasing energy efficiency and conserving energy. Increasing energy efficiency and at the same time conserving energy leads to reduced gaseous emissions in the atmosphere that often results in the formation of smoke. A capable and productive energy management system can go a long way in reducing smoke causing pollutants in the air such as nitrogen and sulfur oxides. This is the most important segment of entire discussion that the Environmental Protection Department of Punjab has a smoke policy. The Environmental Protection Department has installed air quality monitors in major cities of Punjab including Lahore, Gujranwala, Multan and Faisalabad. 
they also monitor air quality and pollution from industrial units and brick kilns strict action is being taken against polluters any polluting unit is sealed and fined until the necessary apparatus which can tackle air pollution is installed the government is now introducing zigzag technology which is more efficient and reduce fossil fuel consumption by up to 20%